If you're one of those people who has a hard time staying invested after you defeat the Ender Dragon, then this video is for you. I'm going to show you how I turn a world like this into a world like this. I'm going to be building the three farms that every Minecraft player needs. So stay tuned if you want to see how that goes. My name is Pineapple Man, but you can call me Penny. And thank you for joining me today in episode 2 of my survival series. I'll be building the three farms that every man wants and needs. Iron Farm, General Mob Farm, and the Enderman Farm. We'll be farming Iron, General Mob Drops, and XP. Three things that players need to jumpstart their creativity and give you the resources you need to stay invested in your world. And so I decided to start on the iron farm first because I think it's the simplest and the drops will help me with the other two farms. So since I'll need at least three villagers for the iron farm, I figured this would be a good time to give you some tips on transporting Goofy Ah villagers. So real quick, I'll give you my five tips that'll make you a villager transporting Giga Chad. Tip one is kind of obvious, but use the villager AI to your advantage. Villagers pathfind to a workstation during the day and hang out there for a while. This is a perfect time to put them in a boat. Also, villagers pathfind towards beds at night. This means you could build a staircase up to your iron farm and the villagers would walk themselves in. I'm bringing over a friend to help with tip number four, but tip number two is to use boats. They're much less tedious than rails, and they save inventory space. You'll be able to use pistons, slime blocks, fishing rods, or sprint hits to help move the boats. Rails are definitely the better option for a dedicated breeding setup, but in the early game, boats are really going to be your friend. Tip number three is to simply use the nether. The nether is actually a pretty safe place for villagers, and since it's 8 times smaller than the overworld, it'll save you a ton of time if you need to transport your villagers somewhere really far away. Tip number 4 is one I don't see used very often, and it's actually just to zombify them. This method does require some preparation though because you're going to want to be familiar with your route. Make sure there aren't any falls or rivers that the zombies could fall in, and you're going to want to go ahead and prepare a spot to put them. Don't forget to cover them so they don't burn in the sun or their helmets don't break. If you're unaware, zombie helmets can break. I use speed 2 splashes to make the process a little quicker. And my final tip is just to never transport more than two villagers if you can help it. You'll be able to feed your villagers crops and they'll breed as long as there's an extra bed for the baby. Stash little pockets of villagers like this around your world for future use. With these tips, villager transport may become a little bit more tolerable. So I felt a little bad about not including a lot of building in last episode, and this one's kind of the same. So hopefully you enjoy this montage I put together of some of my past survival builds, so you can get a sense of what I'm capable of. you enjoyed those past builds of mine. I'm going to take some time to explain iron farming to those of you who may not understand. So hang in there if you already know this. Nowadays golem farming is super simple. Most farms utilize a mechanic known as panic, which is basically when villagers get line of sight with a spooky boy such as a zombie or a pillager, the villagers will go sicko mode and the game will attempt to spawn a golem to help them out. Of course we can intercept the spawn and flush the golem into a killing chamber to farm iron. There are a few conditions that must be met for the villagers to attempt a golem spawn. 
and one of these is the villagers sleeping recently. This is why you see beds in the farm. However, the villagers can't sleep when they're in panic mode, so this is why the zombie on the soul sand column is bobbing up and down between a layer of trapdoors, so we can momentarily break line of sight and get the villagers to go to sleep at night. Golems won't spawn if there's another golem near the village, so this is why I made this drop shoot at least 16 blocks deep to increase the efficiency of the iron farm. Let's see how real time Vinny likes the farm. All right then, well, the iron farm is done and I think it turned out pretty nice. I wanted to make it look a little bit presentable, um, but I didn't go all out on the design because this is kind of a starter farm and it might be temporary. I do have plans to build a real big iron farm in the future. So this will probably get decommissioned. Um, checking on the drops, it's doing really good. It hasn't wow. been running for that long, but I do plan to AFK here for a while today. Okay, so the next farm I'd like to build is the general mob farm. And I'm going to go ahead and get into the resource collection of that and do all that kind of stuff off camera. It's going to be a very standard design and I'm going to speed through it a little bit. It's going to be a flushing type design and I plan to take it down in the future so I'm not going to build a giant one. I'll probably AFK at it for long enough to get a couple double chests of each item and uh, we'll go from there. You guys will have to let me know what you think about the time lapses. I know some people really aren't into them too much. Anyways, I'm gonna go and collect the resources, I guess. So we'll jump right into the time lapse. Okay, so I just finished AFKing for about five to six hours. I haven't looked at the drops yet. There should be a decent amount. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. So if you don't have a general mom farm in your world, you definitely need one because this powers just about everything you're gonna need going forward. Gunpowder for rockets and TNT. Arrows, if you like to use mending bows. String, which is really good for trading, but also you can craft wool with it. Rotten flesh isn't as useful. Some people like to trade with it. I usually just throw it away. And um, bones, which is probably, honestly, the most important drop out of this farm. I think, apart from the gunpowder. Bones are really useful as a source of bone meal and can power a lot of different farms. Particularly wood farms, moss farms, and even flower farms. Um, and these are just kind of really important farms for your world's infrastructure. So the next farm I want to build is that Enderman nope. farm. Oh goodness. <laughs> okay, I was gonna see if he had a mangrove propagule, but I guess I'm not. Okay, so I've made it back to the village and I want to go ahead and mark off these two farms that we already done. There we go. So. Last, last up, I guess, is the Enderman farm. Last but not least, I guess, because my tools are really gonna need a mend soon. And once I've got that set up, I'm gonna take a lot more time to actually set up some proper gear. Right now, I've just kind of been using whatever I found oh in the end city. God. And that's been doing okay, but I really want some nice stuff and maybe a backup set or two, just because fellas really do be out here dying in lava. Anyways, I'm gonna make sure that I don't forget a name tag because I often do, because you need to name tag the Endermite in the Enderman farm. If you don't, it despawns. 
even if it's in a minecart, I believe. I'm going to take some time to get together the materials I need for this farm. I'm actually going to try to make it look a little decent, although it will be um, on the bare bones side. I got a little distracted. I spent um, a couple hours messing around in the village, as well as collecting the things that I need for the Enderman farm. I think I have most of it. Um, as you can see, I put the cute little cringe ah villagers in these prisons, which is really nice and comfy and cozy for them. It's hard for me to address, but organization is not exactly my strong suit. But don't worry, I got plans for this village and hopefully by the end of this episode, this is all packed in the shulker boxes and we're ready to move out. I did make a bit of a smooth brain play. I got about half of this filmed in the time lapse and then forgot to record the second half. It's actually pretty standard, so I'm really not too worried about losing half of that there. We'll go ahead and have a little flyby so you can see the farm working. And if you're unfamiliar with how Enderman farming works, know that it's pretty simple. There's a mob called an Endermite, which Endermen are naturally aggressive towards. As they spawn on the platform, they make line of sight with the Endermite in the minecart and pathfind towards the drop chute. Once they're in the drop chute, they can be slain for XP and Ender Pearls. And this is primarily an XP farm, but the Ender Pearls are a nice bonus. Anyways, our little iron sword here has really taken a beating, so I'm gonna try to fix this little dude up. Okay, well, I've spent about two or three hours here at the Enderman farm, and uh, it shows. So I'm going to show off the gear once we get back home. Um, I'm really happy with it. There's a few things I'd like to add to the collection, but for now, this should be enough gear to really get things going. And for those of you who are uh, concerned about there not being a bridge out to the Enderman farm, I did add this little thingy. So we're good, okay? Here we are, back in the billy. I can go ahead and take this down, I guess. Which means the three farms that every man wants and needs are completely done. All right, let me show off the gear here. I'm pretty satisfied with that gear so I think I'd like to get a little bit of netherite to put on it and of course thanks to the general mob farm now we can use TNT Well then, made it back from the nether, got 62 ancient debris, of course I couldn't have found two more to make it the full stack, but I'm pretty satisfied with this. Okay, let's get this stuff crafted. 
14. finally made it. It is indeed science time. So you see in my hand here, I've got this wooden pickaxe, and this is actually our first wooden pickaxe. Today we will be sacrificing it to science. Here's the deal though, it's on 1 out of 59 durability. Did you know that if you press F3 and H, it pulls up your advanced tooltips? So this will show you the durability of your tools, as well as some other details, like the actual Minecraft name of it, and if it has NBT data, which this one does because it's damaged. Okay, so what's going to happen when we mine this cobblestone at one durability? I hypothesize that it will break, but you wouldn't be wrong if you thought different. That's right, it breaks. So, in past versions of Minecraft, when a tool's durability reached zero, it would not break. It would need to go past zero. So in this version, one is now the last durability point. It's intuitive. It's what most people would expect. Um, so that's a good change, I think. But I saw this a couple versions ago. So I'm not sure if it's still possible. But you could actually get items with zero durability from mobs. So let me take some time to see if these things still exist. And if I get one, we'll experiment with it. Well, it's been about an hour. I managed to get quite a few items off of zombies and skeletons. This is from a few nights of going at it. I also built a little box over there to try and spawn some during the daytime. And out of all this gear that we got, and this, I managed to get a leather cap with zero durability. So this is still possible. What properties does this item have other than just being interesting? and technically illegal. So I'm kind of scared to put it on because it took a long time to get, um, but I'm pretty sure that nothing will happen. Now, I'm sure it would break the second we took damage, but just putting it on shouldn't really do anything. So let's try, let's see if I'm right. Yeah, okay. So you can exist with an illegal helmet. Stop right there, criminal Scott. Zero durability. Okay, so that's actually really cool. Just know that if you have a skeleton grinder in your world or a zombie, spawner you probably have tons of these if you hang on to your um if you hang on to some of those drops like that i know people probably filter them out and throw them away but um they're kind of neat you should you should preserve some maybe try to get a full set of illegal armor um and maybe we could do something with them if we'd like if we get a particular piece we like we could like revive revive it just kind of a goofy concept really this is certainly a bug or an oversight it shouldn't be dropping with zero durability because armor can't have zero durability and I'm gonna prove it. I'm gonna just tap myself, I think four times and we'll be at one Dura. Yep. And one. So this hit should not set the armor piece to zero durability. It, this should break it. And it sure did. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely an illegal armor piece. This piece should not exist. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed today's science. I think it's kind of interesting let me know if you think this is a bug or if you think this is intended behavior. Uh, personally, I think this is a bug and it doesn't really seem intuitive. I know this was a bit more on the technical side and ultimately pretty useless, but science is whatever you want it to be. And I guess today I wanted it to be boring. So make sure you leave your science suggestions in the comments below.
well, I dare say that's all I've got time for today. I really appreciate you watching, and if you made it this far, please subscribe, because it's completely free and it increases my serotonin levels. Next episode, we're going to be moving out of the villi and starting a really big building project. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll see you there.